With all the things that we have learned till now, when we think of connecting our VPC to access services across other VPCs or services hosted with a marketplace or any other service appliance, our whole idea surrounds with, oh, okay, I need to add firewall rules. I need to have entries in the route table. I need to have a proper VPC peering connection. If so, I need to manage the CIDR blocks to avoid conflicts. And of course, I need an internet gateway for smooth access. But what if I don't want to burden myself by creating all this? And what if I could just go with a much simpler solution? And that's what we are going to discuss today. Thanks everyone for joining in for today's session of AWS. And let's talk about the much awaited AWS private link. So if you are ready, let's begin. And in today's session of AWS, we will talk about what is an AWS private link. And we will discuss the relation between AWS private link and the VPC endpoint service. And what are the features and benefits of using a private link. And we will also check how does private link work with a hybrid architecture and a small hands-on demo as usual. If you wish to check any specific topic, the timelines are in the description as well. So let's begin now. But before moving forward with what private link is and how it works, just forget everything about AWS. If in general, I ask you, what do you get in your mind when I say this term private link, more like speaking in a common English vocabulary. So you might tell me that, yes, it's a link, then it must be connecting something or two points, maybe creating a connection between them, like creating a link. And if it's a private link, then the parties involved in the communication link are the only ones who can interact with each other at a given point of time, isn't it? And that's how a private link is formed. Now, if I ask you, if you have a VPC, will it become public by default? Or you might need to perform some operations or add some features for it to be accessed by the public or the internet. And you will say, yes, of course, we need to add a NAT or internet gateway and make them part of our subnet associations. And any instance we create in that subnet, if we have the public DNS enabled, will be accessible to the outside world. That's for the public part. When it comes to the private access, we have already discussed three important concepts. I hope you remember them. The first one is creating your own private subnet, then creating your NAT gateways and routing it through your instances. Second one, you can create your very own site to site VPN and access your VPC instances and services. And the third one, which we discussed in the last session, that was using Direct Connect. With all these, we have tried to make our best efforts to provide a secure connection, isn't it? But the configuration overhead is more and we want a much simpler solution to connect our VPCs and the services. Having said that, let's introduce ourselves to a service called AWS Private Link. This will help us establish private connectivity between VPCs and services hosted on AWS or on-premise without exposing data to the internet. And that is the link that we want to create. And that's where Private Link helps us with. If we have to imagine AWS private link, there should be a private endpoint using which we will be able to talk to services across other accounts and VPCs and which will not be exposed to the public internet. It's simple, isn't it? So remember, private link in itself is not a service, but a method where we create a specific endpoint which will help us to privately communicate and make use of services in other accounts or VPCs. We don't have to make use of any internet gateway, NAT device, public IP address to communicate with services. And the best and the most important thing is to remember that traffic between your VPC and the services does not leave the Amazon network. And that's why we have mentioned here secure private connectivity simplified. And that's what private link is. But when I say it's simple, it doesn't mean that you have to just sit back and relax and you don't have to do anything. Yes, you have to make some changes and you need to bring in some mechanism to achieve the creation of the link. And that's what we will discuss next. When you think of private link, remember that you need to understand two concepts very clearly. One is the VPC endpoint, which will help you create the elastic network interface with the private IP, which acts as the entry point for the traffic to the service. 
and the next one is the endpoint service where we create an aws private link powered endpoint service so that the service that we want to expose can be available for usage so one is the consumer and other one is the producer confusing don't worry imagine it like this so we have john who is working in the engineering team and he wants to use a firewall application that is being provided by the security team which lily is working with for this to work they can create a private link connection by using the endpoint at the john side and create a service endpoint on lily's side to securely access a service and that too without using public internet connection i hope you got the idea now so here as you can see john is asking that i need to use the firewall application can you help me and what lily says is yes i have this service that you need let's create a link and that's how in real time actually things work if you're working with other teams you need to communicate with them and they might create a service endpoint for you so that you can access their services i think we have discussed enough now let's see how it actually works so this is our playing ground which is our aws region so what is our main goal here so we will try and connect our vpc to another vpc that could be in our account or in any other account and we will access the services provided by our producer so here we will act as the consumer but as we are in a learning process think from both sides as you could fall into any of the categories think as a consumer as well as a producer let's start off with our consumer part here we have our consumer vpc with the cider block 10.0.0.0/16 and we have the private subnet where we have our instances and this is where we'll create our interface vpc endpoint which helps us to create our elastic network interface with the private ip that we have here and this will act as our connection point for the first part of the link now let's go to the producer side okay so don't get confused here we have a vpc here as well not that of a big surprise here so if you see the instances here these are the appliance instances that host the service so these instances are the ones that hold the service for you and there is one more important thing here that makes the link possible which is the network load balancer which receives requests from the service consumers and routes them to your services so in order to create a vpc endpoint service you need a network load balancer remember that so now that we have all this set up how do we create the connection first thing you need to understand is that if you want your service to be consumed by the consumer you need to create a service endpoint there is an option in your vpc called vpc endpoint service where you can configure a service endpoint using the network load balancer that you have and you can have a private dns for that as well once you create the vpc endpoint service the consumer has to create an endpoint using the endpoint service dns to create a successful connection and that's where the connection starts so don't get confused here you already know vpc endpoints can be created by three options one with aws marketplace second one with aws services and the last one is with vpc service endpoints that is where you will enter the producer vpc's service point dns to configure your consumer endpoint to make use of the private link to send your request to the network load balancer in order to access the service hosted by the producer that's it your private link connection is ready so if you are the producer and you want your services to be consumed make sure that you have the vpc service endpoint which is basically using the network load balancer to talk to the instances that you have and that service endpoint has to be configured by the consumer by creating a vpc endpoint connection which makes use of the service endpoint that you have here and then generates the private link connection to that and there are a few access permissions that you have to define which we will discuss in the demo so don't worry about that let's move on now let's see some of the benefits of using aws private link so that you can make your own decisions the first point is secure the traffic this is a very general idea that we have already spoken about which tells us that you can use your private link connection to securely access aws service from your vpc without having to make use of the public internet space everything remains in your aws network and that's the best part which in turn reduces the risk of leading to a brute force attack and distributed denial of service attacks or the ddos attacks 
and while creating a vpc endpoint you can have a pinpoint control over the access as you have to provide the details about your vpc id interface type the vpc service endpoint name the subnet ids and the security groups that actually make it more secure the second point is simplify network management so with aws privately in order to access services across other vpcs you don't need to configure any internet gateway or you don't have to provision any vpc peering connection and you don't have the overhead to manage the cider blocks to avoid conflicts thus it's a very simple way to manage your network third one is accelerate your cloud migration here you need to understand that you might be using a site-to-site -site vpn or direct connect to connect to your aws services and that's it you don't have to manage anything more than that this actually helps you to be worry free about migrating your services to the cloud because you will be confident that your service access will be secure that is why it is already written here easily migrate traditional on-premises application to software as a service offering hosted in the cloud with aws private link and if suppose you are a producer and you want to do that you can also do that so that others can leverage your services now let's see some of the basic features of using AWS Private Link. We have spoken a lot about how good Private Link is, but AWS doesn't want us to stop here. So first one is accessing services over AWS Private Link. So here as well, we have already discussed this. Yes, you can create your endpoints and add the service endpoints that you need, and you can securely access the service that you want. Second one is sharing your services over AWS Private Link. So if you are a producer and you wish to make your services accessible for other consumers to access, then you can create your AWS Private Link powered service endpoints and others who want to make use of it can use your endpoint name and you can accept their connection requests. The third point is privately connecting to your on-premise applications. So this is also what we have already discussed just now that you will be using a site-to-site -site VPN or a direct connect to connect to your AWS services and, and you don't have to manage anything more than that. And that actually helps you to be very free about migrating your services to the cloud and, and accessing the services that are already hosted on AWS through the private connections that you want last but a very interesting point here integrating or the integration with aws marketplace so did you know that aws private link is integrated with services in the aws marketplace where you can find existing services and make use of them as per your requirement did you know that but yes it does so aws private link allows you to discover purchase and provision aws private link enabled software as a service products through aws marketplace and AWS Private Link enables you to securely pass data directly to the SaaS application or the software as a service application without ever leaving the AWS network. That's something that has made AWS Private Link a, a much more acceptable solution for most use cases. You don't need any public IP address to access these services and you don't even have to move out of your AWS network. That's so cool, isn't it? And there are companies that have their services hosted on AWS and you can make use of them. So for example, we have Cisco. So Cisco provides a cloud monitoring tool called Cisco StealthWatch Cloud, which helps you to send your data for monitoring and it provides visualization as well. That's cool, isn't it? So yeah, that's it. So now let's see how private link connects using your on-premise locations. So imagine you're working for a hybrid architecture and you wish to connect to your AWS cloud. So you might be using a site-to-site -site VPN or you will be using a direct connect connection, isn't it? Having said that, let's assume you are using a direct connect connection. Here we have our data center. Then we create the direct connect connection to talk to our AWS VPC instances privately. So in our VPC, we create the VPC endpoint to talk to the network load balancer that we have in the form of our VPC endpoint service, which in turn takes our request to the service that we want to access. And that's how a private link connection with the VPC endpoint service is formed. And that's how the users on the on-premise location are able to talk to the services privately using our private link connection. I know that we have another option which is called gateway load balancer using which we can create a private link connection. And that is something that we will talk about in the next session. So don't worry about that. For now, just concentrate on this part. You have your data centers, you have your direct connect connections, you connect to your VPC that you have privately, you create your VPC endpoint using the VPC endpoint service that you have. And from there, you can connect to any of the services that you want. Having said that, make sure there is a service endpoint available. Else, if you want to access any generic services, you can do that by using the AWS services list. So now that we have covered the basics, let's jump on to 
some hands-on demo. So in order to make use of your endpoint services and endpoints, you need to go to the VPC console. So this is our VPC console. And the last time we had already done uh, the demo for VPC endpoints. So I think you can visit that video as well and check out what exactly is VPC endpoint and how we have configured and how it actually works. So let's suppose we are the producers now. And the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create an endpoint service, isn't it? Uh, let's suppose we have an application that we want to host and we want to make it available as a service. So what we need to do, we need to create an endpoint service so that we can expose the service that we want, isn't it? On the left hand side, if you see, we have the virtual private cloud. The first one is endpoints and the second one that we have here is endpoint service. I told you we will have something called endpoint service. But if you go ahead and search for private link, you may not find anything there are no service called private link but you have endpoint services that's a vpc feature isn't it so if i click on this it exactly goes to this point i hope you're getting the point here so we'll come here and we'll click on endpoint services and then we'll click on create endpoint service so now that you see here, we don't have any load balancers connected to our VPC. So this is not showing anything right now. But the most important thing for us is to remember that we need a network load balancer and we can associate the private DNS with the service that we want to host. So as you can see here, a create endpoint service, you can use AWS private link to make services in your VPC available to other AWS accounts and VPCs. AWS Private Link is a highly scalable, available technology that enables private access to services across VPC boundaries. Other accounts and VPCs can create an VPC endpoint to access your endpoint service. That's what the whole idea of this is. Other accounts will create a VPC endpoint. You will create being a producer, you will create an endpoint service and they will be able to access your service. That's it. And endpoint services can be created on network load balancers, gateway load balancers. We have now checked the network load balancer part. In the next session, I'll tell you about the gateway load balancer. So don't miss out on that. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe it right now. So the important difference between network load balancer and gateway load balancer from the connection point of view is services created on network load balancers or NLBs can be accessed using the interface endpoints, while services created on gateway load balancer or the GLBs are accessed using the GLB endpoints. So you have to remember this. Okay, I'll do a small demo. I'll not disappoint you here. Let's at least do the producer part. Let's create the endpoint. Okay, so we have three running instances here that I have stopped. So don't worry about that. We can create one. So we we'll launch instance, just select this, Amazon Linux. And here I'm selecting t2.micro and i'll select the my vpc demo and i'll choose the private subnet that i have okay so this is fine for us the storage is fine i can just give it a name so i can just name it as service ep service endpoint okay then configure the security groups you can just create a new one we are not going to do anything so just leave it as it is and review and launch and launch here. I can choose EC2 access. I have this key and just create a launch instance. So now that our instance is going to be launched, the next thing that we want to do is we need to go to the load balancer part. And here you can create a new load balancer for yourself. So just click on this. Here you see only three load balancers, isn't it? in Mumbai region that you have. So this is the classic load balancer. There's a previous generation one. There's a network load balancer and the application load balancer. So we have to create it for network load balancer. But the fourth one that you have, the gateway load balancer, it's not visible here. And if you switch the region to Oregon, you will be able to see that. Just switch the region to Oregon. Now you see it. OK, so I'll just switch back to my region that I have and we'll be satisfied for now with the network load balancer because that is our requirement isn't it so let's create one so we have the network load balancer here i can just give my demo nlb as the name 
and uh, yeah internet facing or internal facing not a problem i can give it a internal facing and ipv4 this will be tcp balanced 80 and i'll choose my ppc demo and the private because this is my private subnet that i want to tag along and that's it i can just click on configure security groups just click on next you can create a new target group called uh, demo target group it can be with instance or with can ip but yeah instance is fine for us advanced cell checks not required just click on register targets this is the one that is already running so i can click on this one and add to register so now once i have added it to the network load balancer target list it will act as the network load balancer for this not a problem so we have added this that's the only part that was missing for us so now click on review and launch so these are the targets associated to the network load balancer this is the name of the network load balancer sorry sorry this is the name of the load balancer this is the name of the target group and this is the vpc that is pointing at and this is residing in the subnet of private subnet that we have okay so now just create a successfully created load balancer then just close it so now it is in the provisioning state integration status okay see this load balancer is not configured to any endpoint service so here also we can create an endpoint service and the tags so if it is in the provisioning state we can go back to the create endpoint service and we can see if a service or network load balancer is in a provisioning state whether it is able to showcase it in the drop down shall i go back and come back again yeah i can just go back and come back again see now it's showing right and uh, the status now is provisioning so yeah so this is something that we learnt today so if it is in the state of provisioning also it will be able to detect so now you can just click on demo nlb that is a network load balancer that you have so this includes the availability zone that we have and here you can associate a private dns name with the service if you have but i don't have any private dns names here so i will not associate it and i can name a tag here then i can just give it a name my point service okay and that's it i have associated a network load balancer which has the instance associated to it which is my service instance so if you have mentioned that and you have checked the box here then you have to manually make the decision of whether to accept the request or to reject the request so you have to consider this point very carefully so by default most of the times it's always true but it depends on how you are setting up your vpcs and how you are exposing your services so if you don't want to have to if you don't want to take the overhead of manually accepting these connections then you can just uncheck this okay so i think we are good here and you can just click on create service yeah so now your service is ready so this is the service name that you have so this is the service name that you have and this is the one that we are going to use so this is the interface type because we have used the network load balancer and now this is not associated to any aws service we have our own service that we have hosted so this will be used for that and uh, we have the network load balancer arn here acceptance required is yes and we have the vpc id here and yeah that's it we can just copy this service name remember this i'm copying the service name that we have here the service name i'll copy this and i'll go to my endpoints and here i'll create an endpoint so this one actually find service by name you can just paste it here and choose the default vpc because we have already created the endpoint service for my vpc demo okay just choose default vpc and just click on verify service name found okay so we've got the service so this service is available only in this availability zone so it's fine it is showing the all the details that we have and now the security groups that are attached to this is sg e6 ec6 f118 so that is also fine for us that's it once you have this you can just click on create endpoint and it will be created so i can add a tag here again name endpoint demo sorry 
endpoint demo and just click on create endpoint yeah your endpoint is created close okay so now it is showing pending as acceptance isn't it because we have checked the checkbox there to accept the request isn't it the acceptance criteria so let's go to the services endpoint services and endpoint connections it should show yeah here it has come this is the one and if i just right click or actions yeah accept or reject i can do it manually here so i can just click on accept endpoint connection request because it is my service so why should i hurt myself i'll just accept it isn't it now as you can see we have refreshed this and this is an available state yeah that's great isn't it and now it is available and the one thing that we need to understand here is if it is an accepted state then it should have created a elastic interface elastic network interface isn't it so that's what i wanted to check so i, I can go back to the ec2 instance that we have uh, the ec2 management console oh, i have it here itself so i can just refresh this okay so here we have where is that network interface yeah network interfaces it should have created one for us so this is this vpc should have a endpoint id associated to the interface that we have created the network interfaces yeah see here so we have the network interfaces here so now what we can do is we can just copy this and we can see the network interface list that we have and you can just paste here so this is the one that has been created now okay so now this is the interface that has been created for us so it takes a bit of time to actually create the vpc endpoint interface so if i just click on search yeah so this is the interface name so you have the endpoint interface here vpce i'll just copy this and i'll show you that this is the one that we are currently using see this is the one this is the endpoint and that is what it is trying to refer to so this i did not create manually this will get created once you create an endpoint okay so now what we have done we have achieved a lot in this one so we have created the endpoint service for us and we have created the endpoint when we have also associated both of them and we have given the acceptance criteria as false as true sorry so that we can manually accept or reject the connections so i think that was clear isn't it so if you wish to do this you can do this as well but make sure that you delete all the connections as and when you create them so that you don't have any billing problems so that is what i am going to do right now so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to delete this endpoint service first so this is the endpoint service and i'm going to delete this i don't want to face any i'll just delete the endpoint connection first so delete this endpoint okay so first we are going to delete this and we're going to go to the endpoint service we have the endpoint we don't have any endpoint connections now we can just click on the my ep service and we can just delete the endpoint service as well so now we are clear from this we don't have any endpoints we don't have any endpoint service and we'll go back to the instances and this is the only running instance that we have we'll just terminate this okay so just terminate this instance we have to just clean up everything because this is not our company sponsored video so we will incur a lot of bills for this and i think we have learned a lot today and i hope you will also try to do this by yourself by watching the videos and you will try to learn how to do this yourself as well okay so let's move on then and I think that's it for today's session of AWS. I think it was a wholesome session and I hope you learned a lot here as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do subscribe. We have just 20% of people who actually subscribe and watch the videos. So please, please, please do because this channel needs your support. And I'm really working hard to give you the best quality content. And if you have any feedbacks, then please let me know in the comment section. So if you wish to support me, the links to the Instamojo page and PayPal and Patreon are given in the link in the description below. And if you wish to join the channel and become a Mandalorian, then please do so. Just click on the join button. So I'll meet you in the next session of AWS. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. It's Pytholic signing off.